Hey guys, how's it going? Over the past few months, a lot of you have asked for a follow-up episode to the Eugene Burger episode. That's what today's gonna be about. I wanna show you guys a single piece of magic that Eugene Burger and I worked on together. And then I wanna take you along on this journey and the process that this, this effect has uh, gone through over the past few years. I wanna show you the evolution of this. I wanna show you the successes and the failures along the way. I think it's gonna be a fun, informative episode, so let's just get into it. Okay, so Dondra, some of the most interesting things about being a magician are the people you meet. So I once met a man who claimed he was a shaman or a medicine man. He told me that some of the most mysterious things are actually the most common everyday things we take for granted, like a coin or a card or a pin. He also asked me a question. He said, do you think if our destiny is written beforehand, that we can change it with the choices we make. A week after I found out he passed away, this was in my mailbox, this mysterious black envelope. And inside was just a single piece of paper. We'll come back to this, but first, let's play a game. I want you to pick any two of the items. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're not gonna use the pin. I'll just put it away in my pocket. So that leaves you with the card and the coin. Which one do you wanna give to me? Are you sure? Yeah. So you made a number of different choices. Again, this mysterious black envelope. Inside is only one thing, a piece of paper. I want you to read this thing here and go ahead and read it out loud for everyone else. I think you'll find it really mysterious. <laughs> hey guys, listen up. I have had a vision. I will have the card you will have hold of the coin and it is always the pen that gets put away out of sight in the pocket. And there we go. Thank you. Okay, so that's the original piece. Uh, that's the thing I showed Eugene Berger. Uh, here's some of his comments on it, and then I'm gonna show you guys the things he commented on, and then we'll just go right into uh, uh, the next version that kind of formed from uh, his notes. Uh, I like this. First of all, I like the trick. Uh, the Jimmy Fingers trick here. And I like the fact that you did it in a different way by not putting your hand behind your back, which I never uh, much uh, liked. Here's what I, now, now of course what I do of course is give you my take on it. And I can understand if you say, you know, that's interesting Eugene, but I prefer to follow my own way of thinking about it. But here's the deal, I, would rather see you be the source of the magic okay. and not a dead guy that we don't know anything about. Uh -huh. So I have rewritten the script with that in mind. So let's go through it together are oftentimes the most common things that we take for granted, like a card, a coin and a pen. Perfect. Uh, he also asked me a fascinating question. Now here, I don't want to bring out the envelope quite yet. Okay. I want to hold the envelope for a little later, for a moment later. Um, he asked me a fascinating question. He said, do you think if our destiny is written beforehand, we can change our destiny by the choices we make? Now you take out the envelope. Okay. Inside this envelope is a piece of paper. On it, I have written something that I believe will tell us something about your destiny. So the question is whether your choices can change your destiny. Okay. Okay, so that's where I, that's the setup. And let that sink in for a moment. Yes. We will come back to this, but first, let's make some choices with these items. Uh, and here, the, the, the procedure is just dandy. Um, no issue there. Let's find out. Now here, <clears throat> I would ask them to open the envelope because then we can eliminate all this stuff about it being empty or not empty or proving it's empty. 
because they'll they'll discover what's in it themselves. Okay. So you say to them, open the envelope and take out the piece of paper that I put inside. In a light, in a loud, clear voice, would you please read what I have written about your destiny? Now, maybe we need a final line after they read. Um, yeah, maybe we do. Um, I felt like that's something I was missing is that, that closure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So that's the script and the script is just dandy, I think, but let's talk now about the presentation of it. Okay. I want the presentation to have a little more gravitas. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, right now you're talking about a big philosophical subject and you're just kind of racing through it as if you were talking about uh, the Super Bowl. <laughs> See? Yeah. So how can we create that? Well, there's two things you can do. And uh, one of them is slowing down and the other is pausing. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, let me give you an example. Let me just do the first uh, part of the, of the script. One of the most interesting things about being a magician is the people that we meet. I once met a man who claimed to be a shaman, a medicine man. And let that sink in for a minute, see? He talked about how the most mysterious things are often times the most common things that we take for granted, like a card, a coin, and a pen. He also asked me a rather fascinating question. He said, do you think if our destiny is written out beforehand that we can change our destiny by the choices that we make? See, just by slowing down and giving yourself some pauses here, uh, I can make this sound a lot more important mm -hmm. because it's you, you've got a big topic here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> See? Uh, and I think you have to treat it that way as a big topic and just slow down and... Uh, okay. And and just kind of and don't be don't be in a hurry here, because I think that this is a good routine, and you and uh, and I think that uh, you want to get the most out of it. Anyway, I, I I just want the routine, the presentation of the routine, to have just more gravitas. I want it because you're again you know picking out a big topic. And I think we have to give it a certain amount of respect as a topic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would work on it and uh, and, and send me a, a video link uh, when you when you feel you, you've made some progress here. OK, yeah, I can do that. And I think um, what's funny is <laughs> compared to like three or four months ago or maybe like six months ago, uh, mm -hmm. This is a sl way slower than I, w <laughs> I would have done it even back mm -hmm. then. So I, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I just want to slow you down even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not for every routine. Mm -hmm. See, I think part of the, the idea of having a good show is to have some pieces that move along better mm -hmm. and others that... Uh, you know, I mean, Jeff, as Jeff says to us, you know, there are two kinds of audiences, thinking audiences and drinking audiences, audiences that come to remember and audiences that come to forget. <laughs> and th that means that we have to have both kinds of material in our repertoire. Mm -hmm. And this is clearly a thinking piece. It's about destiny and choices. And can we change the future. And so I think this is a, a thinking piece that thinking pieces require slow, whereas drinking pieces require maybe a faster pace. Like if you saw me do the sponge balls, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I might do the sponge balls as the opener and, and Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva as the closer. Mm -hmm. but they'd be done in two different paces, wouldn't they? Yeah. And that brings it down here. So, so here's my thoughts. Um, one, as you think of some other variants on this wrap-up line, mm -hmm. Send them to me, and I'll tell you which one I like the best. Okay. And after you've kind of redone this in the sense of re learning the new script and try to put in these two elements, pauses and slowing down, uh, send me a link to, to watch it, and I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, yeah. Do you have any other thoughts for tonight? Sounds good, thanks. Always good to talk with you. And this is, I like this routine a lot, as you can tell. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, that means a lot. Thank you. And I like a lot the fact that you, you've done it a little differently than Jimmy with this behind the back thing, which, uh, see, behind the back would not work in a restaurant at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it would if you were standing up in the lounge, but why do you want to go there when you can have everything in front? Yeah. So this was a very good choice that you made. Very good. Thank you. Hey, well, good talking with you, and we'll you talk later. See ya. Excellent. Bye-bye. Katie. Katie, okay, yes. cool. Nice to meet you. Devisha. Devisha, I like that. Thank nice you. to meet you. Caitlin. Caitlin. Katie and Caitlin and Devisha. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, I'm a magician, for sure. Like, I, that's all I know. <laughs> but, um, so one of the great things about being a magician is you get to meet a lot of really interesting people, like mm -hmm. Katie. Mm -hmm. Caitlin yep. and Devisha. Yep. Awesome. So I met this guy. He's a he's actually a lawyer, but he's also a magician and like a philosopher. He's an extremely interesting guy. And he told me that he believes um, the most common everyday things are actually the most mysterious things. I think that's kind of beautiful. I think it's kind of dope, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, for instance, just a card and uh, a coin and the pin right mm -hmm. these are just common everyday things but they're also like really mysterious right so like a, ca a card that's been used to like divine the future and it's been used to like win money and lose fortunes and like money has been used for like beautiful philanthropic things and it's also been used for like horrible terrible things right. and again the pin is like literally a magic wand like you write something and you can change someone's entire like perspective on life mm -hmm. and so like these are just common things but they're like beautiful things so I like that. And the same guy, besides like, we were, we were talking about this for hours, but he also asked me a question that I'm never gonna forget. He said, uh, do you believe if your destiny is written before you're even born, that you can change it by the choices you make? So I wanna try something. So I have one thing, I have something written in my wallet. I'm gonna leave it there for now. I think it's written about one of your destinies. It's about your destiny, it's just perfect, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin, right? Yeah. Caitlin. So we'll try this. And again, these are going to be all of your choices, okay? Okay. So, so choose carefully, right? But again, the, the question we're going to ask is, can we change our destiny by the choices we make? So let's find out. So I just pick one of those? Well, so what we're going to do is I want you to pick up any two of them. Okay. You just pick them up and hold them. Any two. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. All right, I'm going to get rid of this. Put it away. You're gonna, the next phase of choice is just this. You're gonna give me one, and that's all. Okay. And again, it's up to you. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's okay, that's great. So look, I wanna give you this, and I want you to just take it out. And look, take it out, yeah. And just hold it. And you made all of these choices yourself. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't match, right? That would be great if it didn't match. So, okay. Yeah, open it up. Okay. <laughs> it's about your destiny, I don't know. Then read it out loud. I will hold the pin, you will hold the coin. It is always the card that is put away. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's destiny. Well. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's, that's cool. it. Yeah, thanks. That's cool. Oh. So as you guys can see, I kind of took uh, the original thing. I took some of the notes Eugene Berger gave me. I slowed down 
And I talked about this in a more meaningful way, but I still didn't want to be too heavy. And that was one of the choices I made. The second thing that you guys saw there is I started to talk more about the, um, the pieces themselves, the coin, the, the card, the, the, the pin. These things could be magical amulets in some way. Now, this still took another form slightly after that. So now I want to show you guys um, a more recent version. This is a version I did um, at a smaller venue. Uh, it was kind of a stand-up show, kind of a close-up show, but um, let's take a look at that one now. So, um, one of the cool things about being a magician is you get to meet a lot of really interesting people. Um, I met this guy in Dallas. He's a, he's a philosopher. He's a lawyer. And, this, and the fact that he's also a full-time magician, it like fills me with pride. So anytime I meet these kind of interesting people, I just try to, try to learn about them as much as I can. And so we sat and we talked for a while. And he, we talked about a few interesting things. And the first thing we talked about was just like how common everyday things are actually the most mysterious things in life. We just kind of take them for granted. So we have like a card and a coin and a pin. So these are just regular items that you might see somewhere and you probably wouldn't think twice about them. But we kind of dug a little bit deeper and it was, we kind of discussed why they might be interesting. So cards, cards were around before the tarot was around. Cards have been used to tell fortunes. They've been used to win fortunes or lose fortunes. And all with just, you know, the flip of a card. Uh, coins, coins are literally the fuel to continue most things we do in our everyday life. People do beautiful philanthropic things with coins and they also have terrible motives all based around a coin. And then a pin, this was the easy one. Pins are basically just magic wands. You can write something down, you spell it out on a piece of paper and you can cause an entire country to change its opinion on something. It's pretty dope. <laughs> so these are just regular things but they're also magical things when you think about them on a different level. So that was the first thing we talked about. And the second thing we talked about was this question. He said, do you believe if your destiny, if, if that's a thing, if it's written before you're even born, can you change it by the choices you make? So I don't really know the answer to that, but I think this next thing is kind of based around that idea. So I want to try this. Um, do you, do you want to help me with this? What's your name? JC. JC? Yeah. Cool. Um, you, I don't, I don't know if it might be kind of hard to just come around and we'll try this out. So, um, so I have something written about, hopefully about your destiny. If not, we'll pretend like this never happened. <laughs> so, JC, you're going to just make a few choices, okay? Okay. So I want you to just pick up any two of the objects. Now, but I want you to make sure it's your choice. I don't want to influence you at all. Those two? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So the next choice, again, I want it to be your choice. You're going to keep one of those safe, and you're going to eliminate one. Okay. When I say eliminate, I mean you're going to hand it to me. Okay. Which one do you want to eliminate? Are you sure? Keep that one safe. Put it like in your pocket or somewhere that I'm not going to get to it. So we're left with this. It can be your item. But we can do something. You basically just you abandon the coin, but if you want, we can switch. That's okay. So the pin. So you made a lot of random choices, and we landed here. I think that's really interesting. So I have this thing written, and it's about, think about your destiny. Yeah. Um, I want you to read it out loud, but read it slowly and we'll do one line at a time. Okay. The card will be put away. And that's literally what we did. The coin will be abandoned. Yeah. You will keep the pin and create magic with it. So you can keep the pin, and you can keep the note if you want, and that's for you. Uh -huh. Everybody can take you out of the box. So, so that, that was a, a more recent version and a couple things happened. You probably don't notice anything uh, big, but a couple things I, I wanted to do. I wanted to be more clear in the message. So at the end, it says, um, 
this thing has been abandoned and you will keep this and it will guide you or it will, and you'll create magic with it. I wanted to be even more specific with the message and then leave them with this souvenir. I thought that that made it even more magical. So what went as like a cool message has now become like a message in, in an amulet that I give the person. This magic talisman that they can go and, and do magic with throughout their life. So uh, that's that version. Now I wanna show you guys a not so great clip and I'll just do a little clip of this. I tried to do a reading inside of this and, and this started because I was doing, um, let's get the book here. This is uh, John Wilson's book, uh, You, Me, and the Devil Make Three. In this book, the last thing, the last piece of magic he, um, he talks about is called, it's called a prediction. Now this is absolutely um, a powerful piece of magic. And it touches a lot on some of the things I wanted to touch on with this piece of magic. And so, with that being said, the thing we tried to do was, um, I tried to do a reading based on something he talked about in here, based on the decisions they make. Because I think that's the focal point of what this thing is about. It's about turning things into amulets and then really doing that for a person as they make these decisions. So, that's kind of what I attempted here. COVID kind of stopped it and I'm not happy with this. I should have been more prepared. I had just read some of the book and I just dove right in and it wasn't great. There are a lot of things. And I think one of the episodes I'm gonna do is talk about um, kind of giving yourself um, brutal honesty. We'll do that in another episode. But I just wanna show you a clip of what I attempted to do. And um, that's kind of the direction this is going. I still wanna talk about all the interesting people you meet as a magician, all of these things. And, and at, the, at the end of the day, the goal is to kind of point to this is all magic and whether or not these things actually predict the future isn't entirely the whole point. The point is finding meaning and magic and sometimes things accidentally predict the future. Anyway, guys, take a look at that. We're gonna turn them into talismans in, in, in interesting ways, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is pick up any two of the items. Those two items. And so we kind of talked about how to do this. So for instance, if we were to give Traditionally, when people think of reading, they think of tarot cards and like tea leaves and, and different things. But we, we talked about turning regular items into magical talismans and doing readings from those. So it's interesting you pick those two things. Cards are typically used to represent like maybe play. And then coins are traditionally like money or energy. And so maybe you kind of pick both of those because you're, you're trying to balance between play and, and, and also making a living, right? So the next choice is you're just going to keep one of those safe and you're going to eliminate one. And when I say eliminate, I mean you're going to give it to me. Which one of those do you want to eliminate? Coin? Okay, and then keep that safe. Put it like in your pocket or somewhere else out of sight. So we're actually left with the pin. So go ahead and pick up the pin. So at this point, this is kind of an interesting scenario where the things you maybe were hoping for the most you don't have, but you have this amulet here, but maybe you can create your own destiny with this thing, right? So here's the thing. You can keep the, you can abandon that coin and keep the pin, or you can abandon the pin and keep the coin. It's your final decision. You want to abandon the coin? Okay, okay, we'll pick up the coin. So this is where you're at, right? You kept the coin, and you can change your mind again if you want. You're happy with this. So I also have something here. In my hey guys, and that's it. Um, I hope that was kind of helpful. I wanted to take you guys along this journey that I've kind of been going through. And I think that the goal for anybody should be to like find a piece of magic or find something they want to say and, and kind of keep shaping that until it's something they're truly happy with. Uh, COVID kind of stopped the progress of this thing. I was really happy with the momentum. I was doing it uh, several times a month and I was, I was getting somewhere. And I attempted to, on the March 13th show, do something that I hadn't fully prepared for. And so I'm not happy with that. And I think there's a lot of process and improvement, as you guys know in the video when I mentioned that. So overall, I just wanted to share with you guys the successes, the failures, and some of the missteps and some of the good, ironic, accidental things I found along the way. But overall, um, this is a piece I'm in love with and I love doing it and I'll continue to do it. And I, I just wanted to share it with you guys. Hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll be back next week. Thanks guys, see you later.
the performer can hear her. But he has a history of being a jerk sometimes, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> Ouch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dealing with magicians is sometimes a, a challenge in itself, I'll tell you. <laughs>